Uh, HiRISE acquired uh, 64 images of Mars in our test week. In each and every one of these images, we are seeing features on Mars we've never seen before. HiRISE can resolve features as small as a few feet across, the size of all of us. If we were sitting on Mars right now and there wasn't a roof over our head and HiRISE flew over, we could take an image in which we pick out each and every one of you in that image. That's how detailed these are. And we're seeing features that surprise us in, in each and every one of these images, but for today I'm going to talk about just three of these. Two of them revisiting the areas that Scott talked about to emphasize what we can learn from these coordinated observations and one bonus area. So if I could have the video, we need video to really appreciate the, the detail in these images because uh, stills just don't do it. These are enormous images. Here's the context image once again. There's a lot more detail in this context image that you can see here. Um, the high-rise image covers a little area there that you see in yellow. We'll zoom in on that. And then we'll show the overlay of a color coverage, which is just a narrow strip down the middle of the image. But we'll zoom in yet again. And now we're approaching the full resolution where we're seeing features as small as a few feet across. This is a beautiful area. This is uh, enhanced fault color. This is not the way it really looked to us. Um, there is, in this area, an overlying layer that has the orange and blue tint uh, thick layer, but it's being stripped away by the wind. This is an active environment on Mars. Beneath this, we see this light-toned material. It's layered, as we see here, layers that fill the crater. This is the clay-rich material that Scott was talking about that's of such interest because it means the environment here was wet. We see a variety of small-scale features. We see small channels, as in water. We see that the bright material is broken up into little plates, which in some places looks like it could be desiccation. So we are seeing revealed here an, a very ancient world. We know that this is very ancient because the over, overlying layer even is old and heavily cratered. But this was a very different world on Mars. This was a soaking wet world where we, we formed clays and uh, small scale morphologies that we don't normally see on Mars. So uh, we will revisit, this is a very small sample, we will revisit this area in the future for sure. Okay, uh, in the next area we're going to go to, in the next video, is a new area. Now we're going to change gears and go to the southern hemisphere of Mars in the ancient heavily cratered terrain. And uh, here's the global view with the Tharsis volcanoes and Valles Marineris, and we'll zoom in on the southern hemisphere, Terra Serenum. And there's a little crater here. It's about 12 kilometers across. Um, that's about 20 times bigger than Victoria Crater, which seems so big compared to the rover. Um, here's the context image again. The high-rise image, we'll zoom in on this. And most of the gullies are in the shadow here. It's winter time here. And uh, zooming in again on the color, uh, we see bluish areas. That is carbon dioxide frost. That's wintertime here, and in areas that have not yet seen much sun, this frost persists. It quickly burns off as, as the sun rises. The floor of this crater has hummocky material that has lots of boulders in it. High rise is very good at detecting boulders. As we move north and uphill, we start to see the gullies. Here is one a gully that's partially sunlit. Most of these are in shadow. What impresses me most about this is that this is really a system of gullies. It's a complex, evolved landform. It didn't, it didn't just form one day when water seeped out of the ground or melted the ice. Uh, this is something that formed over a period of time with multiple events. Uh, we can see this polygonal pattern throughout this slope and in the gullies themselves. This is due to the presence of ground ice. It indicates that some time has passed since the large gullies formed. There are smaller channels that cut that and are influenced by it that are apparently younger. We see some details, and in particular on the web, we, we outline an area that shows a braided section of channel. This is where the, the channels weave in and out. This is characteristic of streams carrying sediment where the slope changes and it can no longer hold all of its sediment, it drops its load and then the channel weaves around these deposits of sediment. So that, that tells us water flowed in this area. 
and this was geologically recent, so we're confirming previous results in much greater detail. Uh, water does flow on the surface of Mars in the current geologic epoch. Finally, I want to revisit once again Casma Boreal that Scott talked about, and uh, this is uh, this is water ice. Uh, this is uh, northern summer. The context image here once again, and I'm going to show you just a, a piece of the high-rise image now. We'll zoom in here and rotate this so that the the bottom of the, the down is downhill, okay, and the top of this is the top of the ice cap. And we'll take a little tour scrolling down this. Now remember, we're looking straight down from above. Here we see the uh, layer deposits at the top with much, a lot more detail about the fractures in the ice, the details in the layers, thin layers, and so forth. But then, as we go down, we see this basal layer that Scott talked about. This is very, very different. It's a dark layer, probably mostly sand, with thin layers of ice. They're not horizontal, they, they pinch out. Uh, something very different happened on Mars. The climate was very different to produce that layer. Uh, that, that's totally different from the overlying layers, and these we see at the bottom here, a repeat of, of layers that look very similar to the top. So there is a history here of climate change on Mars in the relatively recent past that uh, we're going to have uh, a lot of fun trying to decipher with the multiple instruments on MRO.